Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Okay, awesome. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so we're going to start out by just kind of going through the homepage, all the different modules. Um, we'll spend some time on the online store, and then we'll spend the bulk of our time on building a program in the builder. Um, so to start out, this is what the home screen looks like when you enter your organization page. As you can see here, there are a number of teams for this organization. Um, yours will probably look smaller, especially if you are a personal trainer. Um, also note that throughout, I'll be using the terminology athletes and coaches. Um, that's just the verbiage we use throughout Bridge, but note that it's the same as clients and trainers. Um, they can be used interchangeably. So on your home screen here, you'll see a few different modules. So we have Teams, Library, Analytics, and Members. Um, the Teams module will bring you to all of your existing teams. Um, so everyone has at least one team, which is like your personal training clientele. Um, you might have like remote training and then in-person training, but either way, whatever um, team you have, if you click into it, it'll bring you to its own little homepage, which is important to note. Um, this is where you can view the activity report. This is where you can see that the athlete roster for that specific team, um, their status, their attendance. So if you haven't clicked around within your actual team homepage, I definitely recommend doing so. Um, there is a lot of information in there that isn't on the actual homepage that you can see, such as the activity report, um, leaderboards, test results, and then you can see the programs. So there's a lot to look at within the team um, homepage. And then you also have the messages and notes. So any comments that coaches or athletes are leaving on that specific team, you'll see here. And then to manage, so if you wanna manage like a specific roster or see a roster for a team, you can do so there. Um, to manage every athlete you have, you can go to the members module at the bottom. So you would click into this module to see um, everybody in one place. So here you'll have the registration status, which you won't see in the team roster. So this is important if you're looking to resend um, an invitation or make any edits. You can also deactivate a user here or reactivate them from the deactivated tab. So up top here, you can see deactivated. And then over here, you would click edit and deactivate. So if you are training athletes and they're going back to school, let's say, or whatever the case may be, um, or if you're training clients and you kind of have that like on again, off again client that comes and goes, um, it's always better to just deactivate them rather than like fully deleting them because then you can just go here and click reactivate and they'll show back up on your roster without having to re-enter their information and then all of their previous data will still be in there. When, when they return. This is where you can also manage your coaches um, and admins as well. So that is the difference between like a team roster and the members module. You can also add athletes and coaches right from here as well. Then we have analytics. Um, so the analytics is the place where you can generate reports. So when you click on new report, you'll see a number of different options here. Um, I also suggest just kind of playing around with these and seeing what we offer. Um, a very common one for trainers is the prescribed versus actual. This will show on a chart what you prescribed your athlete versus what they actually did. So that's a good way to just kind of get an idea of how the program is working for them, um, what kind of weights they're lifting and all of that. So that is the analytics report. And then over here we have our library. Um, so before we dive into the library, I'm going to touch on payments and store. So if you haven't looked at the online store already, um, definitely recommend doing so. And you can access that just by clicking up here, the payments and store. So this is where you can sell programs. So if you are in the online space and you're looking to promote your programs online for users to purchase and then kind of go through on their own, um, this is a great place to do that. So let me show a little example. Um, so this is our store homepage. So you'll see um, like a cover photo and then you can add your different programs here. 
So depending on your subscription, you can either um, have a program for free that somebody can download, or you can sell it for any monetary value. So you can list all of your programs on the store. Um, you can link to it in your social media, and then it will bring people to your program, to your store page, where they can shop for a program. Um, it's also important to note that if people are purchasing programs, they will be added to your client roster. So let's say you have 35 spots on your roster and you're training in-person clients and then you're also selling programs online. Every time a new athlete purchases a program online, they will be added to your roster. Um, so just something to keep in mind if all of a sudden you notice that you don't have any more spots. It, it might be from people purchasing on the online store. So I definitely recommend clicking through here. It is pretty, um, pretty easy to get through once you like open it up. To start um, <laughs> to make a new pro make a new product, you would just hit create new product. We also have templates that you can go off of, and a whole bunch of other features in here. So I definitely recommend checking out the online store if you haven't already. And then back to the home page. So from here we'll go into the library. So I'm sure most of you have at least clicked into the library and maybe started building a new program. Um, but I'm just going to touch on a brief overview of the library module itself. So within here, you'll see programs, phases, it always does this in webinars, um, programs, phases, workouts, blocks, and exercises. Let me see if I refresh it, if it'll let me click into it. Yep. Yeah, okay. So in this library, you'll see all of the templates. So bridge has actual like program templates that you can either clone and edit um, or assign out if you'd like. There's also Exos templates here. So this applies to all of these. So you'll see templates within phases, um, workouts, blocks, and then obviously our pre-made exercises that we have in our library. So <clears throat> you can click into these. Um, and then if you're not familiar with the language, the program is the like entire program that you create. It could be 12 weeks, six weeks, um, however long each program is that you design for your athletes or clients. And then a phase is a portion of the program. So that could be like, um, like a general preparedness phase for three weeks or however you program out, the chunk of weeks would be called a phase. And then a workout is the actual day within that phase. Um, and then a block is a group of exercises within the workout that make up the workout itself. And then of course your exercises are your individual exercises. So you all also have access to create custom exercises, which I wanna to touch on as well. Um, so you can do that in a couple of places. You can do it directly from the builder, which I'll demonstrate when I'm in there, um, or you can do it from the library here. So you can click new exercise. It'll ask you to give it a name. and then it will bring you here. So once you're in here, you can select the different parameters that you'd like. Um, it can be reps per side, weight per side. You can play around with all of this, and then you can also add a video. So you'll have the option to either upload a video from your computer or you can import it from YouTube. Um, so if you have your own workout demonstrations that you like using, you can upload them on your computer and then upload them onto your exercise library, or there might just be a video from YouTube that you really like that explains an exercise well that you want to use. Um, so you can also import that directly from YouTube. Or if you put your own videos on YouTube, you can just embed the link in there. That also goes with our existing exercises. So let's say there's a workout or an exercise in here that has like everything in there is exactly what you want, but you don't like the video. Um, you can override that by importing one from YouTube or uploading one from your computer. So the same thing goes there. Um, whatever video you upload last will override the existing video. So if there's a video that you want that better explains it, um, or that's actually you demonstrating it, you can just upload it there. So that is the custom exercises. Um, let's see. We'll hop back into programs. So when you're ready to design a new program, you can do so at the bottom tab here that just says new program. 
So we're going to start a training program. Okay. So once you start to build your new program, it will bring you here. You have the option to start building your own phase from scratch. Um, you can use a template phase, so an existing phase, either from Exos or Bridge, or you might have a phase that you templated and saved yourself, which you can use, or you can add a phase from an existing program or use our training engine. So today we're going to walk through building a brand new phase from scratch. So it'll ask you to give the phase a name. And then it will bring you here. So this is your clean slate. You're starting a brand new program. Um, we're starting with day one. So what I usually like to do is create, like add all the days that I want to add. So if we're gonna start with a two day split, we'll just add new workout so that I can build from there. Also notice that it has the option to add a template workout. So you can just kind of, instead of going from here and adding a template, you can just go right from here and add a template workout that you have. So that's also an option, but we'll start here. So it's gonna ask you to give the workout a name, full body, and then we'll start by adding a block. So you'll see here as well, you can add a template block or just a new block. Um, and I'll go through all of these options in a little bit, but we'll just start out by adding a brand new block. So we'll start with a warm up, if I could type. And then once you hit enter, it'll bring you here to add an exercise. So once you're in this screen, you can actually just type in all of the exercises you want, enter, and then put in the new, like put in the next exercise without actually having to like click out and back in each time. So let's say we went to a dead bug. Bridge. And some push-ups. Here's another spot where you could create a new exercise as well. Um, just be careful if you go from that, like if, let's say I said push-ups and it wasn't in here and I wanted to create a new exercise, it'll take this exact name how I wrote it um, and create the new exercise. But I have everything I want for my warm-up, so I'm going to click insert and it will bring me here. So it will auto like put the parameter in a zero and then to change it you can click in, add all of your sets, so I'm gonna do three sets of dead bugs. For this, I'm gonna do time, and then I'm gonna unclick reps. So within the parameters here, you can check off um, the different parameters that you'd like to use. So if you're using reps and weight, or just time, you can play around with this here, but you can select up to three parameters for each exercise. So we're gonna do time. So I'm gonna do 30 seconds of dead bugs. And then I'm going to just hit apply to all and that they'll all take the same time. So I'm just going to click out of that. And then let's say I wanted to do this same prescription for all three exercises. There's a little blue circle in the bottom right corner that if you click, it will copy the prescriptions. So then I can take that and apply it to the rest of my warm up exercises here. So now my warm up is set. Um, but I actually also want it to be a superset. So when it's set up like this without the little superset button at the top, it would prompt you to do three sets of dead bugs and then move on to three sets of blue bridges and so forth. So at the top here, I'm gonna hit superset. And now it's gonna prompt when the user is on their app, it will show them to do one set of dead bugs, one set of blue bridges, one set of push-ups, and then back to the top. So it'll make a superset. So I would also like to do this workout on my day two. Um, so there's a couple of different ways we could do that. I can either clone the block and drag it. Um, but let's say I have like a much longer program. I can copy this to multiple days. So let's say I had four weeks and I wanted to do this each day. I could copy this to all of the weeks within my phase as my warm up. Um, and then you also have the option of saving it as a template. So let's say I want to use this for all of my phases throughout my program. I could hit save as template, warm up, May training. And then 
when I'm adding a new block here, I would hit template block, my templates, and hopefully it's in here. There it is. It would show up that way. So there are a few different ways to like clone and copy um, a certain block to different days. But for now, I just want the two days. So I'm going to go here and delete this day. OK, so now we have the warm up. Um, it's a superset. I have my 30 second parameters. So we're going to move on to building the first block. So I'm also going to make this a superset block. So I'm going to click in here. That's the option. You can either hit new block and then edit it to superset, or you can create a superset block. I'm just going to call this circuit A, um, and then same thing. We are going to just add in the exercises. OK, so same kind of thing here. Um, you can also edit this and put in the reps that you'd like if it's if it's already set to like the layout that you'd like it to be. So if I wanted to do 12 reps here, I also have the option to just clone it and clone it. And then let's say over here, you can then click in and do it. You can kind of play around with it. You can either do it from the home screen, like from the builder screen, or you can do it by clicking in. Not 19 reps. Um, so same thing here, you have the option to clone it, or you can add a new set and then hit apply to all. There's also the option to add rest. So if I wanted to add, prompt my client to rest for 30 seconds after each set, I can put that in as well. Um, and then over here, I have it set to absolute, which is this one right here. So when it's set to absolute, that will prompt your client to put in their weight. Um, so if you don't put any weight in, it'll show up for them as just like an area to enter their weight. If you have a client who you know exactly what you want them to do, you can definitely add in the weight there. But if you're programming for multiple people at once on the same program, I recommend just leaving it blank and then they can enter their weights if you choose to do it the absolute way. Um, but there are a few different options within the, this parameter itself. So you obviously have the option in here to choose the unit. So if you wanna do pounds versus kilos, you can change that. Um, but we also have a number of different parameters within the weight. So percent one RME is going to be your percent one rep max. Um, so in order for this to actually give your athlete like a number, like a weight, it has to have test data in there. So if your athlete doesn't have any test data, it won't show up um, with an exact weight. But if they have 100 pounds as their one rep max and you enter 80 percent one rep max, it would show up as 80 pounds. Um, so that is what percent one RME is. And then this one right here with the little link next to it, that's one RME um, linked. So if you're having them do split squats, um, I don't know, you wouldn't really use this for this example, but let's say you were going to have them do a percentage of their goblet squat. Maybe you would, I don't know. You can enter that and then you can take the ratio. Let's say you want them to be doing 80% of what they can goblet squat for their split squat or better yet, 50%, um, then you can do that and it will pull from that from that exercise. So I think a really good example of this would be if you have your clients or athletes doing like Olympic lifts um, and they're doing like, let's say hand cleans and they should be doing like 60% hand clean of what they do for their full clean. Um, that's a good example. You might know what they, they can front squat but not what they can back squat or vice versa. So. There's a number of different situations to use this in, and I do think it is really useful um, in the right scenario. So that's what the little linked sign is. And then we have percent body weight, which of course is the percent of your athlete's body weight. So as long as they have a body weight um, in the system, it will pull from that. And then absolute, which I already went over, that's just gonna be an absolute value, either that you enter or your athlete. And lastly, we have percent difficulty. So percent difficulty is a little bit different. Um, I would say it's more comparable to like RPE. If you're familiar with RPE, like the rate of perceived exertion. 
So percent difficulty on bridge is going to pull from both test data and active sets. Um, so if you enter 60% split squads and they have data from last week or the week prior or any active sets, it will pull from that. Um, if they don't have any data entered, it will give them this little pop-up first. So if you entered like 70%, it would prompt them to pick a weight that you can move fairly easily. So that's percent difficulty, um, a little bit different from the other ones, but I'm gonna stick to absolute. So let me think what else here. Um, alternative exercises, this is also a great option. So alternative exercises would be a good place to add either progressions or regressions, um, or it could just be something like if you have clients that travel a lot, you might wanna add in a dumbbell exercise instead of a barbell exercise if they're not gonna have access to a squat rack or something like that. Um, so to add an alternative exercise, you would just type it in here and say, we just wanted to do a body weight split squat. You would enter it there. And then here you can either click just alternative or you can have it show up as a progression or a regression. So I do regression and then you can either keep the same prescriptions as the primary exercise or you can change them here. If I want to change it because we're not using weight, I can click that. And then if you want to apply it to other instances within your program, you can click that and apply and it'll show up here and your athlete will see it on their app as an alternative um, exercise there so that is a little example of the parameters um, building a circuit and all of that so next i want to touch on the different um, options here that we have for i guess like specialty blocks we call it um, so we have AMRAP, EMOM, and RFT. So AMRAP is as many rounds as possible. EMOM is every minute on the minute and RFT is rounds for time. So these are really good conditioning blocks to put in. So let's say I want to create an EMOM at the end of my workout. I can just call it, let's call it conditioning EMOM. Um, and we're gonna go for 10 minutes. So I put 10 rounds in. It'll bring me up here. Let's say we're going to do squat jumps, mountain climbers. Okay, we'll go climb. Right. So if I put those two in, um, then I would set the number of reps that I'd be doing every minute. So let's say we're doing 20 reps. And then I didn't really want rope climbs, but it's okay. And then this one will do time. So let's say we're doing 30 seconds of rope climbs and we're just gonna be alternating back and forth for 10 rounds. That's how that one would work. Um, and then we also have the other options, the AMRAP or rounds for time. So if you put that one in, it would just ask you for rounds and then um, the AMRAP would ask you for rounds as well. I'm gonna delete that. Okay, so I'm just gonna add one more block in um, we'll do a template block. Let's say here, just so that I can show um, the load progression view. So when you're building out your workout, I usually start by just building out all the days that I want. I'm going to change this actually. Okay, this is another thing here. If you have, want to switch an exercise, you can just tap at the top which exercise. So let's say we want to do a barbell back squat gonna throw that in um, okay let me just fix this really quick I'm gonna add weight in there and we'll do percent okay you can also drag and drop so let's say you put a bunch of different exercises in um, and I wanted to do goblet squats before back squats for whatever reason I can just drag and drop it and then you can also do the same with the blocks. So if you need to rearrange anything, you can just drag and drop. Okay, so let's say I have all of my workouts planned out for the week. Um, I did one week at a time before adding more weeks. 
and I wanted to do it for four weeks total. So I'm going to go to the top and click week actions and then clone week. You can also add a week if you're doing different workouts each week. You can just hit add week if it's going to be different. Um, but for me, I'm going to use the same workout for four weeks and then just progress it. So what I would do here is clone it four times. And now I have the same workout every week for four weeks. And then from here, um, this is one of my favorite features on Bridge at the top. We're currently on week view. So it would show day one, day two, day three, however many days you have. But if you want to see the progression view, you would hit load progression view. And that will show you the four weeks of your same exact day. So this is great because it allows you to progress um, or make any changes throughout the course of your phase. So if you wanted to start um, at 12 reps and then by week three, we're gonna up it to 15 reps. Maybe by the fourth week, we're gonna increase volume a little bit by adding a fourth set. Um, you can do that. It just makes it very easy to see everything in one place so that you can make those changes for a specific day over the course of four weeks or however long your phase is. And then let's say we are using percentages and I'm working on my back squat. Um, 15 reps, that was aggressive. Let's go five reps. And let's say we're starting out at 60%. Um, just a quick example, I can copy the prescription here paste it, but this week we're going to go 65%, and then by the third week, we're making our way up to 70%. Um, so that kind of shows you a good idea. If you are using percentages, it's a great way, the load progression view, to kind of see it all in one place so that you can make those progressions um, so that by the fourth week or whatever end of your phase is, you're hitting your goal. Let's see, let's say we want to be doing 90% by week four for five reps. Oops. Then you can do it that way and look at it that way. Um, so if you haven't been using load progression view, I definitely recommend um, taking a look at it. It's, it'll auto put you at week view where it would show you both days. And then to toggle back and forth between the weeks, you would just click through here. Okay, so. Mm -hmm. I think that is all that I want to talk about in the builder itself. Now I want to touch on assigning a program. Um, just also okay. a quick reminder to um, send in any questions you have, because when Emily finishes her walkthrough, we'll go through um, any questions that are submitted. Okay. So if you go back, like you, your training program has its own little homepage, um, which you can get to from programs. Where is it? Oh, I have, oh, oh, I didn't go over this part. Okay, this is important because this just happened to me in real time. But on the side here, you can like pick and choose what you're viewing. So if you have all programs selected, it will show both your programs and the template programs. Um, if you just wanna see your programs, you could just click into my programs. And in that case, it was shown on EXO, so it wasn't showing the program I just made. but if your library is looking a little bit cluttered or you just wanna see specific ones that you made, um, then that would be under my programs. And then the status here on the side is also important. So if a program like the one that I'm working on now, it's unassigned because I haven't assigned it to any athletes yet, it'll show up as unassigned. Um, once it's assigned, it'll turn green. And then completed workouts, completed programs will also, um, once the program's completed, it gets moved to the completed fold folder and the completed folder is usually toggled off. So if there's a program that you can't find um, when you're searching for your programs, chances are it was just completed and it got moved into the completed status. So once a program is completed, it gets moved to that status. And then if you wanted to edit it, you would have to clone it and kind of make a copy of it 
to continue editing it because once it's completed by an athlete, it gets moved there and then you cannot edit that specific program. Um, but this is the status. So if you, again, wanted to kind of manage what your library looks like, you can always click in here. So if I wanted to see just my programs that were unassigned, there is my May training program. Okay, <laughs> I'm glad that came up. So here's my little training homepage. It shows my phase. If I had multiple phases, I could drop down and look at all of them here. Um, you can also click these three dots and clone a week or reorder a week or go through these different options here. Um, but what I wanted to walk through is how to now assign training. So let's pretend your program's completely done and it's ready to be assigned to your athlete. You would go in here and click assign training. It will prompt you to pick a team. And then you can select either your entire team or let's say you only want to select a few athletes from your team, you would click them and then go next. So this option shows you workouts on calendar and workouts as playlist. So these are the two different options um, on how you assign a program. The calendar will prompt you to pick the actual training days and then that's what will show up on your client's um, app. So they'll actually see the day on their app training calendar that has their assigned training. So since this training program is two days, um, it's going to ask me to pick two days and then I can select the start date. From there, it would assign them two days of training, um, Monday and Wednesday, because those are the days I selected. And then I would click next and assign the training. Um, so once training is assigned, let me cancel out of this. Once training is assigned um, as calendar or playlist, it can't then be changed to be the other one. So let's say you assigned a program as calendar and now you want to create, now you want to assign it as a playlist, you would have to go up in here and click clone. So now it says copy, um, so you can rename it if you wanted to. Okay, playlist. And then go back and assign it again. Um, so I'll show you what playlist looks like if you're not familiar. Okay, so playlist is gonna show up for your athletes, um, not on the calendar, like they'll still click into the calendar, but it won't give them specific dates. So they'll be able to go in and preview it and then start the workout. Um, and the difference there is they can go in any order that they want and they can repeat a workout. So if you have a whole playlist of just a variety of different workouts, they can go in and pick and choose. Um, this works really well for people that might not be able to commit to a set training schedule, or if you have supplemental workouts, let's say it could be like rehab exercises that you want them to do, or maybe like a core workout playlist that you're adding in, um, because you can assign multiple programs to the same athlete. So they could have their, their main strength workouts, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then you want them to pick two workouts a week from a playlist. Um, they can have both of those assigned to them and they'll appear on their app for them to like pick and choose. So that's a good functionality of the workouts as a playlist, but it won't show up the same as the calendar. Once they're in the workout, it will look the same, but it's just kind of knowing which one would work best for your clientele. So same thing, you would just assign the training. Um, over here, it's asking me if I wanna keep their current programs active. So you can either replace them all or keep all active. That just goes to show you can have lots of programs assigned. As you can see with this test athlete, they have four programs assigned. Um, so you can replace some of them and then click yes. You can also choose when to schedule the program and if you wanna um, notify the athlete as well. So now the program's assigned. Um, you can add clients on here, you can remove them as well. Another thing that comes up is how to delete programs. So if an athlete's assigned to a program, it cannot be deleted. But once everyone from the program is removed, I believe it takes 24 hours and then um, it will automatically move to completed where it can then be deleted. But 
If you're trying to delete a program and there's athletes assigned, um, it won't let you. So that's just something to note as well, that they first have to be, it has to be incompleted before, um, before it can be deleted. But I think that's everything that I had to go over. Um, does anybody have any questions? You can either write them in the chat or I think unmute yourself. We don't have any submitted currently, so we can just wait a second if anyone's typing. Um, but just as a reminder, this webinar is recorded, so um, we'll be sending out a follow-up email with the link to the recording. So if you missed any of it or you just want to reference back to it, you'll have that available. And then our next webinar is on May 31st at the same time, and that will be a Q&A. Yeah, so that's a really great webinar to join. Um, we get a lot of great questions, and it's had me think of different features and new ways. So it's really fun to learn from one another and see how other people are thinking of using the tool. Um, okay, it looks like we don't have any other questions, so we'll wrap it up here, but if um, questions do come up, you can always reach out to our support team, um, and we'll be happy to help you all out. Uh, so thanks for joining, and hopefully we see you soon. Mm -hmm.